Good morning once again and welcome to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We kick off this morning by, of course, uh, going through the major stories making the headlines across the country. And uh, we've invited to join us and share his thoughts on these stories, Mr. Demola Kingbola, the publisher of the Podium News. Thank you. Good morning and thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you once again for having me. Right, and the Thank first you. paper we'll be looking at today, if you could kindly have that on our screens right now, the Punch newspaper, the big story plastered across several other newspapers in Nigeria today is about the NERC tariff increase uh, for electricity. It says TUC threatens showdown as NERC, that's the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, denies 50% hike blames inflation. The details here we see, uh, it's uh, Congress saying it's betrayal. FG bringing out policies meant to cripple economy. And uh, the commission is saying increase between two and four naira reflecting impact of inflation and forex. Another story here, still about COVID-19, uh, we spoke about earlier, federal government expects 42 million COVID-19 vaccine doses. Uh, we see that uh, Nigerian leaders and healthcare workers would be vaccinated first. Nigeria and China in talks on COVID-19 vaccine direct flights between Nigeria and China, I presume. And this one says foreigners without COVID-19 certificates will lose uh, visas, says NIS. Uh, poor investments, low revenues, others threatens Nigeria's 2021 growth. And that's according to a statistics put out by the World Bank. So many other stories here uh, on the punch, including this one making headlines. It becomes, you know, sort of a, a buzz on uh, Twitter. It says ex FinBank MD Uwosu jailed for three years for 10.9 billion naira fraud. I mean, that's just huge. Alabasiki graduated from University of Ibadan in 1979. Certificate not forged. We see, we still see that uh, the politics of uh, certificates, forgery, or otherwise, is still going on yeah. in uh, regarding the Edo elections, elections. Long after you know the governor has emerged. So, Mr. Ademola Kingbala, let's bring you in here to to throw more light on these issues. Which of them would you like to? weighing on this morning uh, of course let's start with the um showdown the pending showdown between the tuc and nerc uh, just as we said last week so many things are have become inevitable for nigeria as a nation in the face of dwindling revenue in the face of lack of um, productivity um, forex rate has gone up the Naira has been devalued several times. And the obvious choice is for us to begin to look at how uh, we can embark on appropriate pricing of social services. Yes, this is not the best time for such an increase, but what we need to ask ourselves is, do we have a choice in this matter? Okay, so what I expect government to do through its various agencies is to enter into dialogue with appropriate um, staff representatives, appropriate stakeholders, and let them say reason. One problem with this government is that its stakeholder relationship management is awful. Most times, policies are in, uh, implemented without adequate sensitization. People just wake up and you hear that this is going on. Even when such policies are justified because of uh, the recession that the country is going through, uh, the way they are introduced um, leaves uh, a lot to, to, to I mean, it, 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 it doesn't speak well of, of the reputation of the government. So I really don't see um, how this is going to be avoided, really. Most of the power distribution equipment are imported. We don't manufacture anything in Nigeria. Once they are imported, you're talking about Forex, okay? As at um, last week, I think, at the official rate, Naira against dollar was about 480 Naira. So all of this will factor into how electricity tariff is priced. So yes, the timing is wrong, but I do, I really do not think there's any government at all that would deliberately introduce policies to hurt the people. It has become uh, summer inevitable. That's the way I see it. But the way we go about it and what we do with the expected increase in revenue is what we should be talking about. They want to increase the tariff. When they increase it and more money comes in, would they plow it back to improve electricity distribution? Because that's where the issue is. The problem with us is not in generation, distribution. 
And that is really where we need to focus on. All right. Um, it's one of the things that was also mentioned, you know, and uh, very likely will come up later in our conversations. Uh, the uh, NERC okay. stating that one of the reasons would be to improve uh, distribution and improve uh, service delivery yeah. to consumers. Um, of course, that's one thing that Nigerians yeah. will still um, ask about. Um, yeah. You know, as, we have, as, as Nigerians pay taxes, you know, Absolutely. can we see the effect of these taxes um, in our, you exactly. know, the lives of Nigerians? But anyway, let's also quickly talk exactly. about the 42 million yeah. um, vaccines that are expected. That uh, the, It's also on the point this morning. Uh, Nigeria expects to receive yeah. about 42 million uh, doses of the vaccine. How possible do you think that is? Good news. And um, you know, do you think that we, we, of course, as a country, will get that you know, in time? Well, good news, if it turns out to be true that those vaccines are coming, my concern will be storage, distribution, Honesty and sincerity of the officers. Hopefully, we pray that they won't divert these um, vaccines into private pharmacies. Hopefully, we, we, we hope that the vaccines will not be destroyed as well as shoddy handling. Okay, 42 million is quite a lot. And I, I, I do hope that they do come in. Again, is, is, there, is there anybody out there who is thinking of sensitizing the people? Even in developed countries, people are people are resisting the vaccine. People are complaining. In Nigeria, where people are living in self denial of the existence of COVID nineteen, will the vaccine be allowed to be distributed? There are cultural issues. There are concerns. Okay, people have come out to say, "Look, COVID nineteen is a scam," and backed upon by government officials to flee the country of its hard earned income. So these are the issues we also need to look at. How, how ready, how prepared are we as a nation to effectively distribute this COVID, I mean, these vaccines to, to, to the point that those who really need them will get them. So good news that the vaccines are coming. I hope they will come in on time. We hope they will be well handled and stored very well. And I hope that we will have an efficient logistics system in place to ensure that they are well distributed. Good news. Good news. And we hope it's not I'm happy. Just, you know, an exciting yeah. story to um, what are the amount of Nigerians for now? Uh, because, of course, from yeah. the, the reports that yeah. we had yesterday, uh, there was um, a lot of doubt about whether Africa will receive vaccines. Uh, Moderna had stated that they had no plans of shipping any vaccines to South Africa. Um, and so, you know, we're not sure, you know, if these are just exciting headlines or they are the truth. But we'll find out with time. Let's move yeah, to the Nigerian. Yeah, I, 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 also, I, I also have my doubts if they will eventually come because the developed world will definitely take care of its own citizens before thinking of the third world, okay? Yeah. And of course, these persons, they won't come cheap. Do we have the money? Can we afford them? So those are the issues we also need to look into. We'll, we'll figure yeah. it out. Let, let's move to the Nigerian Tribune yeah, sure. uh, this morning and see what we can also find yeah. over there. Uh, some of the major ones there, of course, still talking about the electricity rates uh, that have been adjusted by 2 to 4 naira per kilowatt hour. Yeah. Um, also, NSARS, Lagos pays for forensic examination of Lekki toll gates. Uh, of course, I'm sure you would like to talk about that one. It's been more than a month, actually, maybe about two months or even three since that incident happened. Uh, I don't October, know what forensic October investigation. 20th, 20th. Uh, Four months. Um, yeah, Four months. I'm not sure what... A, October 20. I'm not sure what um, forensic yeah. investigation would still be relevant at that uh, at a time like this, but we'll find out. Also, no political influence in our business decisions, and that is from Intel's. Um, COVID-19, 731 batch BNYC members test positive, and that's from the PTF. Uh, President Buhari okays oxygen plant in each state. COVID-19 certificate a must for future travels, immigration boss says. Um, apprentice disappears with master's three-month-old baby in Ondo State. And also why Southeast governors boycotted Igbo bipartisan meeting. Um, we also have on the Nigerian Tribune this morning, 2021 budget oil prices hit th uh, $53 a, a barrel as OPEC freezes production. Uh, I think those, those are the big ones that we would quickly share this morning. Uh, but let's start with the forensic examination of Lecky Tollgate uh, and see, you know, what we can make out of that. Okay. Um, for me, and this may sound pessimistic, but the legal judicial panels, 
the report is dead on arrival, really, because this event happened on October 20, 2020. This is January. The Lakers government is about to embark on a forensic examination. Four months after, evidences will have been tampered with, evidence will have been destroyed. So I really don't know what they want to achieve, okay? And with all things Nigeria, we may never get to the true end of what happened on that sad evening at the Gate. A lot has been said, a lot has been brought out into the open. The deniers have continued. The army has eventually said, oh, we actually deployed our men there, but they didn't use live bullet, all of those things. What will the forensic examination achieve? Fashala has gone there to detect, detect in court, one of the cameras, that has been picked up, don't know where it's been kept. So what exactly would the forensic examination achieve? I, 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 I just think the Legacy government wants to go the old org to justify its position that it never ordered the army to um, shoot on the protesters, really. I, 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 at the end of the day, it's, got, it's, it's, it's going to be a, another case of unknown soldier, okay? If, if you remember, uh, the issue of fellow and of state who, I mean, who did it or not soldier. I, I guess that's, that's where this is going to end. But it's just so unfortunate. And I also believe that lessons have been learned from everybody, I mean, by everybody involved in this. And we will try, as far as possible, to avoid this um, happening in the future. All right. Let's look at um, no political influence in our business. And Intel, for a very long time, Aladi Achipu has been accused of rent seeking of taking advantage of the Nigerian economy, of, of feeding facts on, 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 on um, government businesses. So now that he sold off his shares in Intel's, let's see um, what will happen to Intel. Let's see if they will also, they will remain competitive, okay? I mean, what they had for a very long time was a near monopoly in terms of collection of uh, revenue for Nigerian Port Authority and other uh, marital stakeholders, I mean, um, uh, stakeholders in the in the uh, oil industry and uh, also we want to see exactly how things will go all right for them oh, yeah. but we it's a good decision on part of government and like i said we we, we we wait to see what we get out of this all right quickly also share your um, thoughts on on the the scary one about 731 batch b core members uh, testing positive for covid 19. Um, that that must it's really, create some it's, worry. It's, yeah, it, 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 it's worrisome, and I want to say that I have a fear that this is even being underreported, given the fact that we are not even doing enough testing in Nigeria. We are not even doing up to 40% of the testing we should be doing. This is really, really, really scary, and I really do not know how we got to this stage, but the point is, if you have been following trends on the social scene, Christmas, New Year, a lot of our young people trooped out to go to the beach. They attended parties, and these are the these are the people that we are talking about here. A lot of Nigerians are they are carriers, but they are asymptomatic, and these are these are the people that you really need to worry about. The young people, impressionable, they are not even seeing things the way the whole world is seeing things. To them, COVID nineteen is is not real. Okay, so this is worrisome. I quite agree with you. And I do hope that government will make very urgent efforts to move it, isolate them, and, and get and give them the best treatment that is available. Good is saying that the president has approved oxygen plant in the next state. We pray that this plant will indeed be built. Okay, as in all things Nigeria, there's, no, there's always a gap between approval and, and, and implementation. But we hope this would um, come to life. Okay, and it's good thing that immigration is saying, okay, COVID certificate is a must for future travels. It's a welcome uh, development. What is up is the fact that we learned last week that in Lagos State, people are selling fake COVID-19 certificates. Yeah. It's really, really worrisome. I mean, so we, we, we are at the point where we need to be sincere with us as a nation. It, it, right. It's callous if people could go to the extent of selling fake certificates. Still, so unfortunate. 
Um, Mr. Akimbala, one more paper before we go. Yes, it's the Guardian newspaper. The okay. big story here also is All about right. the COVID-19 vaccines. Lots of questions about that. The just yeah. questions you, you raised, essentially, questions about storage of the vaccines, yeah. even though the federal government has said that they will store them in dry ice. Uh, questions also about frontline workers and the elderly uh, likely to take the vaccines first. And uh, the, the other story here on the Guardian newspaper on page six of the guardian says fg dragged to un over torture alleged torture and detention of shore and others now the pdp here is telling apc leaders you must account for alleged 15 trillion naira loot and Niger Delta militants threatened renewed hostilities, as well as a story of insecurity. Kidnappers abduct pastor, three others, and kill hunter in Delta State. Also, gunmen kill one, abduct 20 passengers in Nasarawa. Still the story about COVID-19 and uh, Nigeria, South Africa, posting the highest daily continental COVID-19 infections as well as the electricity tariffs uh, in uh, Nigeria. But let's quickly look at the one uh, concerning Shore. The federal government has been dragged to court, and that's by SERAP, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, taking this matter to a higher authority, so to speak, and asking the federal government to immediately and unconditionally release Shore and the four authors that were arrested with him for, quote unquote, exercising the fundamental human rights when they protested in Abuja on New New Year's Eve. What's your thoughts on that, Mr. Akimbola? Well, um, wittingly or unwittingly, the federal government of Nigeria turned Shore into uh, a global hero. Each time this guy breaches very clear rules, very clear guidelines, um, he, he, he comes across, he paints the picture of someone who is being victimized. I don't think Shore was sleeping in his house when they went to pick it. I don't think he was walking on the street, conducting himself in a gentleman behavior when they went to pick him. He was leading a protest and preaching COVID-19 guidelines. Okay, it's okay for Sarah to, I mean, to, to advance the cause of um, uh, human rights abuses in Nigeria, but I also think that it's very important that our citizens we do not go beyond our boundaries. We, 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 no matter who we think we are, it's very important that we obey the laws of the land, okay? Um, I really do not see what the UN is going to do in this case, rather than to urge the Nigerian government to release him. But he's been uh, taken to court, and let's see how uh, the, the, the proceedings will go. But suffice to say that Shawari and others must learn to respect the laws of the state, they must learn to comport themselves in a way that's no longer legal, that's also constitutional. Yeah, but Mr. Akimola... minimum requirement. Mr. Akimola, yes. I just want to quickly ask, you know, you, you just mentioned that he was yes. breaching COVID-19 guidelines. Uh, the charges against him don't seem to have a lot to do with COVID-19. Uh, there's criminal conspiracy, there is uh, unlawful assembly, there's, of course, an um, attempt, attempt to incite the public. Uh, the public. It doesn't have a lot to exactly. do with COVID-19. And so, you know, even if it was, was about the COVID-19 yeah. guidelines, um, does that require um, his arrest and brutalization and him being, you know, carried in handcuffs uh, to court? That doesn't justify it, really. But again, if you resist arrest in a violent manner, I don't know exactly what led to him being handcuffed and all that. But I also want to um, remind us of your arrest antecedents. Okay, it's never really been a friend of the police. It's never been someone that will be invited for question and return. I'm, I'm, I'm not vilifying him, and I'm not trying to justify what the state is doing. I'm just trying to see how we can strike a balance between being good citizens and government. Also, needs to. It's not everything government should get agitated about. There's something that you overlook, really. As long as the gathering was not going to threaten public peace, as long as they were not carrying firearms. You just need to prevent police protection and let them be. Okay, each time you get this guy arrested, you're just making him very more popular and you are just putting yourself in a very bad light. Okay, but at the same time, Shiwale, as a good citizen of Nigeria, should, should look for more legal ways of putting his opinion across and also finding a way. There are so many people who hold the same opinion that Shiwale holds, but apparently they are going about. In, probably in a more civilized way, in a way that doesn't um, 
and gender confrontation with with with, with law enforcement agents. So right. neither here nor there. Both sides should learn to be moderate in everything that they do. Yeah. All right. Demola Kimbola, publisher, the Podium News. Thank you so much for your time this morning, all the way from uh, the US. And uh, of course, looking forward to speaking Thank with you, you again. We wish you uh, an interesting day ahead. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too, sir. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thank right. you. Um, of course, uh, you, you know, a lot of points, you know, that, you know, he's made that, you know, I, I would agree with. Um, of course, you know, people have described the increment by the NERC as insensitive, you know, mm -hmm. bad timing came without a warning. There's a lot of that, you know, and then there's also the angles where people would argue, oh, well, it's almost inevitable. Um, if you want better power, you have to pay for it. Uh, the question mm -hmm. is, you know, are we really getting better, you know, oh, electricity yes. supply in Nigeria? Yes. So. Yes. Now, while we we'll wrap up uh, uh, off the press, there's a story, a uh, question I would love to ask. I would have loved to ask Mr. Hakim Bala, but we're running out of time. It's, it's a story here uh, on The Guardian. It says, Niger Delta militants threatened renewed, renewed hostilities. So just like ASU, they're saying if the government uh, fails to reach its own end of the bargain, they would begin to bomb and destroy all facilities, oil facilities in, in the Niger Delta region, saying or oh, alleging enough. that, uh, you know, uh, resources and from the Niger Delta are being used to develop Abuja and other parts of the country, and they need development in their region. So we have no idea how this will go. The government has yet to issue a statement. We only can just uh, watch and see. We'll see. Thanks a lot for joining us uh, so far. Coming up next, we share with you what happened today in history, a couple of years ago. And uh, of course, to bring you up to speed on the 6th of January, stay with us here on The Breakfast. <laughs>